So when it comes to King Arthur, there are characters that most people are pretty familiar with. King Arthur himself, Guinevere, Lancelot, Merlin, and so on and so forth. But there are also a lot of really fascinating characters that are a little bit more obscure or less well known. So today that's what I'm going to be talking about, my favorite obscure King Arthur characters. So I want to start by talking about Gareth and Lynette. Gareth is King Arthur's nephew through his half-sister Morgos, and the younger brother of several other Knights of the Round Table, including Sir Gawain. Wanting to prove himself on his own merits rather than through his heritage and family connections, Gareth goes to Camelot in disguise. He's assigned to work for Sir Kay, who puts him to work in the kitchen. However, when a woman called Lynette shows up asking for help to rescue her sister, that's Gareth's time to prove himself. Which he does. They go on a journey together. They overcome many obstacles and enemies. They rescue her sister. The only thing that I don't like about this, I think it's a really cool story overall, but I don't like at the end that Gareth marries Leoness, the sister, and not Lynette, the one that he's been traveling with and had time to bond with. I don't find that to be realistic, but, you know, that's just the way that it is. Actually, in the poem by Tennyson, I believe he actually implies that it could go either way. All right, I found it. Here's what it says. And he that told the tale in older times says that Sir Gareth wedded Leonors, but he that told it later says Lynette. So clearly I'm not the only one who thinks that the two that went on the journey together and went from reluctant allies to trusted companions should be the ones getting married at the end. In any case, that's maybe a topic for a different video. For this one, I've got other characters to talk about, so I just want to say that some of my favorite King Arthur characters are Gareth and Lynette. Another character I really like is Gareth's older brother, Sir Gawain. Gawain is best known for his role in the poem Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, which tells the story of how he beheads a mysterious green knight who then, you know, picks his head up and is totally fine and still alive, and then is required to accept the same blow in return at a later point in the future, and the story of his quest to find the green knight, and it gets complicated. In any case, I had to read this poem for school for a college-level British literature class, and I wasn't really that into it when I first read it. But looking back, it's a fascinating poem, and it's an interesting look at the world of King Arthur coming from a different perspective where characters like Arthur and Guinevere are background players, and the focus is instead on one of the Knights of the Round Table. Speaking of Knights of the Round Table, another one that I think is really interesting and a little bit underrated is Sir Percival. Typically, stories relating to the quest for the Holy Grail will focus around Galahad, because in later versions, he was, like, the greatest of knights and the one that was destined to retrieve the Grail and all of that. But actually, the earlier versions center around Sir Percival. And so I think it's actually very interesting that Sir Percival was originally the knight associated with the Holy Grail, but then was displaced in that story and became just a sidekick to Galahad. Sir Percival's story involves meeting the Fisher King, who I think is also a really fascinating character. He's a king who has been badly injured and whose kingdom has become desolate and barren, and it seems that there is a connection that one is the result of the other. I think that's so interesting. I mean, it's a concept that shows up in general in a lot of fictional works. The idea that when you have a, a king or an absolute monarch of some kind, that their physical health or their character will be reflected on the kingdom that they rule. So like, for instance, in The Lion King, when Mufasa dies and Scar takes over, the Pride Lands become this desolate wasteland. And then when Simba defeats Scar, they begin to flourish again. But to have it be like, not just a metaphorical or an imagery kind of thing, but like a direct connection, I think that that is fascinating. Another character that I think is very interesting is Elaine of Astolat, otherwise known as the Lady of Shalott. The poem by Tennyson is actually very different from the original story. In the poem, she's under a curse that means that she can't stop weaving and can't leave her tower, and she's watching Camelot through a mirror that she has reflecting the window back to her because she can't even go and look out the window. There is none of that in the earlier versions. Elaine of Astolat is basically just a lady whose father hosts a jousting tournament, and she falls in love with Lancelot, who's there to compete, and when he is injured, she tends to his wounds, but he ultimately has no interest in her, he only has eyes for Guinevere, 
and she dies of sorrow. Both of the stories center around her unrequited love for Lancelot and her untimely death, but with very different circumstances and context. Speaking of Lancelot and Guinevere, there's another couple in King Arthur that really kind of parallels them in an interesting way, and that's Tristan and Isolt. These characters are a little bit more well-known than some on this list, but they're still not as iconic as, say, Guinevere, Lancelot, Merlin, and so on. So I'm gonna go ahead and include them. Tristan is a knight of the round table, and Isolt is the woman who is betrothed to his uncle. However, Tristan is sent to pick her up and take her back to his uncle for the wedding, and he falls in love with her along the way. Tragedy ensues, as one might predict. There don't seem to be a lot of happy couples in the world of King Arthur. There seem to be a lot of either tragic unrequited love or tragic illicit affairs or things like that. However, one couple that does get a rare happy ending is Ewaine and his wife Laudine. Now, their story does begin with him killing her first husband, so yikes. Terrible first impression. But they eventually fall in love and they get married and the story is basically after he stays away for too long and is unable to return, him fighting to get back to her, and along the way he saves a lion from a dragon, which I think is kind of awesome, and he ultimately returns in time to save her life, and they get back together. I like this because it's a happy ending, and there are not a lot of happy endings in these stories. And then finally, this is definitely the most well-known character on my list, but I just have to include her because she's my absolute favorite, the Lady of the Lake. The Lady of the Lake shows up in so many different variations, in so many different stories, different names, Nimue, Vivian, Ninian. The Lady of the Lake is the one who emerges from the lake with the sword Excalibur and delivers it to King Arthur. She's also frequently credited with raising Sir Lancelot, and she's often cited as one of the women that are in the boat with King Arthur at the end when he's being taken to Avalon. However, she also sometimes comes across as a rather malicious character. Does she help King Arthur? Is she an ally of his? Or is she an enemy who seduces Merlin and learns all of his secrets and then traps him inside of a tree? She's a character who can be interpreted so many different ways and play so many different roles, and personally, I find that to be fascinating. Who are your favorite lesser-known King Arthur characters? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you liked this and you want to see more from me, be sure to subscribe. I post new videos every Monday and Thursday.